the Powerful Content Podcast, your go-to source for content creation, strategy, and business inspiration. I'm your host, Mel Daniels, content strategist, coach, and speaker, empowering women across the globe to grow their business with powerful content that connects, nurtures, and converts. So if you're ready to create standout content that gets you noticed and remembered or build an aligned audience who love you and are ready to buy from you, you're in the right place. I believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's up to you how you use it. Listen in for genuine and insightful chats with guests, as well as practical tools and strategies from me. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's dive into the show. Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to episode 83 of the Powerful Content Podcast. Today, I have with me the beautiful Sarah Aktag, and Sarah is the founder of Eliza Stock, a stock photography membership offering unique stock images for busy female solopreneurs who are ready to elevate their brand and never ever run out of content. For almost a decade, she ran a successful wedding photography business in Tasmania and moved to Melbourne in 2020, where she launched a product photography business, because we all know what happened in 2020. Through working with busy brand owners, it became clear women in business needed stunning visual content and lots of it. So Eliza's stock was born. When she's not behind the lens, she's a wife and mum of three, and she loves chocolate almost as much as she loves her family. Welcome to the episode, Sarah. Thank you so much, Mel, for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that statement. And do you know what? I kind of agree with you. I almost love chocolate as much as I love my family. So my first question has to be, what's your favorite chocolate? <laughs> okay, without a doubt, hates. I don't know if you know their little milk chocolate freckles. They're my favorite. And my second favorite would be the mint frogs. Oh, nice. I'm partial to a, a mint and chocolate combination. My family think that I'm a little bit crazy. You know, I love the chalk mint ice creams. I love the yeah. chalk mint combinations. One of my favorite chalk mint combinations as well, actually, you need to go and try this out, Sarah, is lint. Do an amazing chocolate mint combination. I'll anyway, try that. I will. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Enough about chocolate. Now, I know that you haven't always been the queen of stock images. I've touched on your journey a little bit in your bio, but can you just tell us a little bit more about how you've ended up where you are today? Yeah. So as you mentioned, I used to be a wedding photographer and that actually started with my dad. He was a wedding photographer and he basically taught me the ropes and I started my own business in Tasmania. Then when we moved to Melbourne, COVID hit and I started actually photographing products from my kitchen bench. I just needed to do something and I couldn't do the weddings. And then slowly just built up the stock membership from there. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty much the journey. And from then onwards, I also noticed that there was, in my membership, there was a need for financial images. A lot of my members were downloading those. So I created financial stock images, which is another platform where people can purchase individual stock images too. Brilliant. I love that. And I also love, Sarah, how you basically took after your dad in this respect. I know that you have a very close relationship with your dad. And I think it's really beautiful that you've taken on this wedding photography because he did as well. Because I know that family is such a huge value of yours and a huge importance of yours. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about your kids and yes. how they're involved? <laughs> That's really, a, it's a family affair. My two daughters love to help me within my business, especially my 11 year old. She's always helping me. Even when she's at school, I get little emails showing me a little Canva template she's designed during the holidays. She's planning my photo shoots, even I think it was a couple of days ago, I did a photo shoot and I had a few things left out and she's like, mom, mom, come in here. And I raced into the studio and she'd set it all up. She was dressed ready in a, like the outfit that was matching. And she's like, yeah, take a picture of this. And I'm like, wow. And it matched, it did. It matched the, the collection I was building because she used all the same colors. She really thought about it. So I love it. And I love how she also helps you with the behind the scenes, the capturing of your business as well. If anyone wants to go and check out Sarah's Instagram account, there's some amazing behind the scenes imagery there too. Lots of fun. 
Okay, well, we're here today to talk about stock images. So let's just start from the top. What are stock images? They're pre-designed images, which you can use within your, your business. Basically, they're curated especially for women to use and make life easy, really. Yeah, right. I guess my next question is, what's the difference between the free stock images that we could potentially, I don't know, people most commonly probably get them from Canva. What's the difference between those and ones that you pay for in a membership like yours, for example? Sure. So say, for instance, the free stock sites that you go to, if you go to those, you can it actually tells you in some of them how many times the images are being downloaded and some of them are in the hundreds of thousands of times. They're not unique. They're something they're readily available to everyone and they're used everywhere. The biggest difference is mine are like locked up behind closed doors and only a small number of people get to use them within their business. So they, they're really unique. Yeah. And I love that about your images as well. They are beautifully unique and very specialized too, in terms of that beautiful feminine approach, which is not something that we see a lot of in the the free stock images either, is it? That's right. Yeah. So why do we even need stock images in our business anyway? Well, I want to start by saying like, when you use images in your business, you need at least four different types. You need your branding images of yourself user-generated images, behind-the-scenes images, and then your stock images. So the stock images are, they are readily available to use. They make your life easy and they can send the right message within your brand. But they're also great filler images when you're in a hurry and you just need a quick image to post online. They're there to make life easy. Yeah, I love that. And so... Where could we actually use these stock images then? So you, you've, you've mentioned there that you could put them online, but mm-hmm. where, what else could we actually use them for? You, you could use them anywhere, really. Social media, all the different platforms, your websites, your blogs. The list is endless, really. Wherever you think you can use them, you can use them, basically. You just can't share them or pass them on. Okay. Well, can we touch a little bit on this already? I wasn't going to get into the legal side of things, Mm -hmm. but this is a really interesting point about how you use stock images as well. So when we download a free one from Canva, sometimes I think that we just, you know, pop it on our socials and just forget about it. But should we be actually crediting the person who took it? What's, What's the right way or the legal way of using stock images? Sure. With stock images, you don't need to credit anyone. If, if they're royalty-free images, say in like Canva or my membership, you don't need to credit. It's really interesting, actually, if you're just using an image from online that you found, a lot of people think if they credit the person, then it's okay to use. It's not okay to use. You cannot use an image you just find online unless it's from a proper site, or like one of the royalty-free download sites. Otherwise, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. Wow. I did not know that. So if I decide that I want to just, I don't know, find an image of a plant for some, from, for some weird reason, <laughs> I don't know why I would want to do that, but say I did. And I use that in a lead magnet that I had put together or oh. on my socials. You're actually saying that I shouldn't be using that even if I credit where I got it from. That's correct. It's all images are copyrighted. So you could end up getting yourself into a lot of trouble. Wow. I did not know this. I did not know this. The things you learn. Okay. People stop doing it. Stop going onto the internet, searching for images and downloading them because you're going to get yourself into trouble. (laughs) Now we know how we can use stock images and why we could use them or how we could actually use them in our business. And we know that stock images really help us elevate our visual brand and can be used in conjunction with, you said, those branding photos, the user-generated photos and behind-the-scenes type stuff. Can we go too far with using stock images? Can we overuse them? Absolutely. Absolutely. I do not recommend using every post a stock image. No, I would definitely use them within your business very neatly in amongst all those other images. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so how could this be a bad thing for our business if we did use stock images too much? 
Yeah, it wouldn't feel genuine. It wouldn't feel unique. People want to see yourself, the business owner. They want to see behind the scenes, what's happening. They want to see your other clients and what they have to say about your business. So if you're just using stock images, then they're not seeing those things in your in your brand. Yeah. And I, th- I guess really to be able to connect with a business or a person, you really need to see the person and understand who they are as a person as well and what they stand for. So it's not just about the stock images. It's about you too. You can't hide behind them, people. Don't hide behind <laughs> the stock images. They're, they're amazing to use, but don't hide behind them. Awesome. So we know that people might have trouble actually connecting with you if we overuse our stock images in, for example, our socials because they don't have that ability to connect and feel the authenticity of us. How else can it impact our business or our brand if we're overusing stock images? Yeah, so you really become, they're no longer eye-catching. They're they're almost boring. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) But it's true. People get bored easily and they want to be engaged. They want to, they want to know about you and your business and all that other, you know, they want to, they want to be involved and using stock images all the time isn't, isn't the way to go. Yeah. And something else I probably see, Sarah, with the use of stock images and it particularly people in startup phase who don't necessarily know any better or haven't been around for a while, that their use of stock images can be almost literal. I don't know whether you've seen it or not, but, you know, it's almost like we're talking about growing our sales and so we uh, find an image of a graph that's showing, you know, the, the arrow going up kind of thing. So we've become really quite literal with our stock images. Yes. On top of that, we don't really realize how many times an image has already been used. And I mean, yeah. that's that's just an experience thing as well. Like if you haven't been around in the online space for a while, you don't really see a lot of images. So you don't know that there's certain images that get used over and over again. Again, So do you think that that has an impact on our brand as well? Absolutely. I've been online for a little while now, but I have seen constantly the same images used over and over again and they are used even if you go onto Canva and look at some templates they've used the template and the original image and you see that being posted without it being changed to suit your brand so it's really unengaging really forgettable yeah it's just people don't take notice of that type of imagery yeah right So when we're thinking about choosing what images or stock images to use, for example, on our Instagram grid, we might just want something to, I don't know, break up a couple of graphics or whatever it is. And we're thinking about using particular stock images. Have you got any tips that you could possibly share with us around how we can use stock images in a way that's engaging and is you know good for our brand as well sure so it really comes back to your brand and what's your brand stand for the meaning the message you're trying to send and your branding colors you really want to stay consistent within that it doesn't mean that if your branding is red you need to choose all red images it just means that you will need to take into consideration the colors as well as the meaning behind the images you use And if you want to use a free Canva template, go ahead and use it. But change the image. Don't use the image that's there. Don't use that font. Change it to your own font to suit your brand. Yeah, be unique. Yeah, fabulous. I love that. And I think that a lot of people do actually forget that just those little things of making sure that things look like us and feel like us can have such a huge impact on the way that our ideal client perceives us as well. You know, if we're using just a different font between our website and our graphics, it can have a huge difference. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Do you know that the human brain processes images 60,000 times faster than text? (laughs) That's crazy. So So if someone lands on your website, you want your image to be beautiful. It's important, right? It's it's super important that we really don't just think about, for example, on our website, the copy, but we also think about the visuals as well. So if if our our brain's looking at the images and making decisions about it 
more quickly than the words, then it's super important, right? That's right. And it has to be on brand. It has to send the right message. It has to tell the story that you want your your potential customers to know. Awesome. So that's one way that selecting the right image can really help engage our beautiful clients and, and get them interested and start them on that client journey with you. What else can we do? Or why why else is it really important that we choose the right images for our business? Our emotions drive our decisions and images evoke emotions. So mm. having the right image is the perfect way to do that. And that's really true because when we look at a an image and it appeals to us, then we have a certain amount of emotion attached to that. So it makes it might make us like the person more it might make us you know dislike the person more it can really yeah it can really or it can really give you a sense or a feeling can't it so like maybe an image and I know that you have some beautiful images like this of of nature can really help us feel calm yeah absolutely yeah so why else why else are images so important I I spoke a little bit about this earlier, but being consistent within your brand, it really helps build trust with your audience. It makes you recognizable. So people know it's instantly you and you're very good at doing that with your branding on socials. I always know when it's you popping up or your branding. That's amazing. Thanks, Sarah. (laughs) You're so lovely. But yeah, it's really important, right? So you want to be able to almost not just stop the scroll, but if someone continues scrolling, that they recognize or identify that it is actually belonging to someone. So I love that idea that it's about consistency in branding. Is there anything else? Is there anything else why we need to understand the images and choosing the right images? You want them to be relatable. So they really kind of gel with your brand and the lifestyle and how your customer perceives the message you're trying to send. Yeah. And I think that that's also really important as well, because a lot of free stock images feel very hard and very, they almost feel abrupt. Don't they, Sarah? Like it's it's just like the colors and the way that the images are taken or are formed. It can feel really harsh. And if our ideal client is perhaps a woman, then it <laughs> then it's not helping your cause in terms of being relatable. You're actually doing the opposite, aren't you? Yeah, you're doing your brand as a service, really. You're hurting your brand by using these images. And I mean, it's nothing to say against those photographers who are taking them. They are literally free images online. Uh, They probably haven't put a lot of planning and thought into them or how they're going to be used. They're just getting them out there quick and fast. I don't think anyone likes to work for free. So I think that's something we need to consider when we use them. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And what else? How, How else can images really help us to connect, nurture and convert our ideal client as well? They can ha- enhance your, your user experience if you're using the right images, of course. <laughs> Again, sending the right messages, the, using them in the right places. And if something's visually appealing, right, we're going to want to come back to it, aren't we? Or we're going to want more of that person. We're going to want m- to see more of who they are. And if they're using these beautiful images that really appeal to us, then we're more likely to return. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for this discussion today, Sarah. It's been absolutely amazing. And I know that I have personally learned a lot about stock images today that I didn't know about. And I've been in your world for a little while. I know that you have some amazing free resources that can really help people with choosing the right images. And the fact that they will get some images as well, I think is a little bit of a bonus. So do you want to just talk to that? What have you got that people can sign up for? Yeah, sure. So my most popular one is 20 free stock images. Now I know I've talked about free images and using free images, using them constantly. This is a digital taste test. This is so people get an idea of what's inside. You can definitely use them and a lot of people do and they use them beautifully, making them memory. But yes, that's my main resource. 
Yeah, and they are absolutely beautiful images as well. So make sure that you jump on down to the show notes and grab those free, amazing free images from Sarah. It was very generous of you to share so many of them as well. Now, if you're looking to find Sarah, she has so many amazing businesses. Mm -hmm. Not only does she have Brandalize stock, but she also has a beautiful financial stock business as well. So if you are in the finance sector and you want uniquely Australian photography that features Australian money, Australian themes, so absolutely beautiful. Make sure you go and check that out as well, as well as her product photography business. So if you have any products, you're listening to this, if you're listening to this podcast and you're actually a e-commerce business, then make sure you go and check out that as well. Sarah is an amazing, amazing photographer with unique talents and the most amazing experience as well. So thank you. Now, before we finish up today, Sarah, I'm all about women owning and using their superpowers. So what would you say is your superpower? Well, I would have to say imagery. Definitely taking photos, putting together collections. I love that. Yeah. And I think that you do that so well as well. Just the amazing, (laughs) yeah, your amazing ability to pull out the essence of something in a scene and translate that into an image that we can use is just a phenomenal superpower. So thank you for sharing that with us. Do you have any final parting words of wisdom for my listeners? Just think twice about using a stock image. If you're going to use it, then think of a way to make it your own. Don't just use it as is inside a template that you found online, even though it like you might think it looks really, really beautiful. And it probably is. Somebody else has used that exact image, that exact post. It's no no longer unique. It won't stand out. Be be yourself, your brand, your own brand. Yeah. I love that so much because, you know, I'm all about being uniquely you. So yes, if you can just take your image, but make it your own, then that is the the greatest. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Sarah, and sharing your wisdom with my listeners. I've actually had the honor of watching you and your business grow, especially in confidence over the last couple of years. So I truly appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Mel. It's honestly been an honor. And I just want to thank you for everything you do within your your business and helping me. You've been amazing. Thanks so much for listening. That's it for another week. To get more powerful content in your life, make sure you're following along on socials. My handle is at Meld Business. And just in case you're wondering, the groovy music for this podcast was created by Just Here on SoundCloud. I'd also be super grateful if you took a moment to rate and review this podcast so more amazing women like you can experience the power of content. And if you're like, hell Mel, stop talking. I'm ready to work with you now. Here's how we can work some powerful content magic together. Firstly, come and join the content effect. My membership, Inspiring Women with Service-Based Businesses to ditch the content chaos and start creating standout content that gets you noticed and makes sales. You can join us by using the link in the show notes or just Google the content effect. The second way we can work together is via my one-on-one packages. We can create a sustainable content strategy or start to build out your client journey. It's up to you. Hop on over to meldbusinessservices.com.au forward slash services to find out more. Until next time, have a beautiful week and embrace the power of your content.